easy to spot instances can save you a lot of money one real life example of spot usage is hotstar a popular cricket live streaming service here's the traffic pattern when new zealand and uh, india were playing i've uploaded the link to the video in the description new zealand started batting and the traffic quickly increased to 10 million viewers and then it went up all the way to 14 million and after that there was a sudden dip in traffic as it started raining and the match was stopped the match was pushed out and restarted on day 2 and this traffic pattern was when india was batting you can see that the traffic went all the way up to 25 million viewers when dhoni was at the crease now you need a massive infrastructure to support this type of traffic and in fact another challenge is the bulk of the computing capacity is needed only during the match hotstar uses a fleet of spot instances to add capacity at a lower cost just to give an example here is a pricing comparison an m5 2x large spot instance would cost $67 for one month usage whereas the same instance when you use on demand purchasing the charge would be $280 so with the spot we can in fact add four times more capacity for the same cost as on demand instances or you can also lower the infrastructure cost by up to 80% to maintain the same capacity however the issue is spot instances can be interrupted with a 2 minute warning so how do you handle the interruption Let's look at three popular strategies. Any instance can fail unexpectedly, including on-demand instances. For example, if there is a physical host failure or availability zone failure, you're going to lose instances. So, your application architecture needs to be resilient to failures. Now, one option is we can use health checks. Using health checks, a load balancer can distribute traffic only to healthy instances. For example, I have two spot instances registered with an elastic load balancer. And when you visit the load balancer DNS, we can see a response from both the servers. Now, let's simulate a spot failure and we are going to terminate one of these instances. and we indeed get a gateway error however on a retry the request is routed to other healthy servers in this example a portion of the request will fail until the load balancer health check detects the instance failure once the load balancer is aware that the instance went down all subsequent requests are routed to healthy instances so with this health check strategy some of the requests are going to fail and the client must also retry Now the question is will there be a scenario where you lose all your capacity due to spot interruption now in fact it may be possible however to minimize this possibility we need to use as many spot pools as possible AWS maintains spot pools by availability zones instance family type generation and so forth the supply and demand vary by spot pool So a common strategy is to bid for spot capacity in multiple spot pools. Even if there is insufficient capacity in one spot pool, you may find plenty of availability in other spot pools. With auto scaling, we can automate this process of bidding across multiple spot pools. Now another question that may come up is is there a way to handle spot interruptions gracefully? That is Can we handle spot interruptions without impacting the client? The answer is yes, and we can do that using auto scaling. So let's look at auto scaling capabilities. Let's take the previous scenario where we have a load balancer with a bunch of servers to process requests. During a scale out event, when auto scaling launches a new server, it registers the instance with a load balancer. Once the instance passes the load balancer health check, it will start receiving requests. Similarly, when auto scaling needs to remove a server due to a scale down action, it must first deregister the instance from the load balancer. 
When the instance is deregistered, no new request is sent to the instance by the load balancer. However, the server is allowed to complete all the pending requests. This can be controlled using the deregistration delay parameter. And finally, after the deregistration delay is completed, the instance is terminated by autoscaling. So the idea here is when autoscaling receives a spot interruption warning, it will immediately deregister the instance from the load balancer. This will give the server a two minute window to cleanly process all the pending requests and gracefully shut down. The second benefit of autoscaling is we can maintain a fleet of spot instances from different spot pools. This further minimizes the risk of losing too much capacity due to interruptions. Let's look at how we can configure these. When you create an autoscaling group, you can specify instance specification in two ways. We can specify instance attributes in terms of the number of CPU and memory, or you can specify the instance types. With the instance type option, you must identify a primary instance type and optionally specify additional instance types. So you have an option here to specify multiple instance types, which in turn gives you access to different spot pools. The instance attribute option is even more flexible. Let's say we need servers with up to four CPUs and up to four GB of memory. Now with this configuration, there are in fact 22 matching instance types. So we are now able to bid for instances in 22 different spot pools. By using many different spot pools, we can ensure an adequate number of uh, spot instances and also minimize the risk of losing capacity. For the instance purchasing, we can specify the ratio of on-demand and uh, spot. Let's go 100% spot. And for allocation, capacity optimized is recommended. Here, autoscaling can select spot pools based on the available capacity, and that minimizes risk of interruption. We can also opt for lowest price instances. Let's go with the recommended option, which is capacity optimized. Now, EC2 also publishes an early warning event when capacity is low on a specific spot pool. When you enable this option, autoscaling will proactively replace high risk instances by launching instance from another spot pool. So autoscaling, in fact, monitors for two different spot events. The interruption warning event to automatically deregister an interrupted instance and launch a replacement. And the rebalance recommendation event to proactively replace high risk instances. Let's create the autoscaling group. We have two new spot instances that were launched by autoscaling. And we can see the response from both the servers. Now, what about use cases that do not use an elastic load balancer? For example, data analysis jobs like Apache Spark cluster or MapReduce cluster and so forth. Now, these clusters are designed to handle instance failure and can safely relaunch failed tasks in another instance. AWS SageMaker Machine Learning Service can also use spot instances for training jobs. The machine learning training process is iterative in nature, and after each iteration, SageMaker saves the result in an S3 location that we configure. And in case if a training instance is interrupted, SageMaker can launch a replacement instance and load the saved parameters from S3 and continue from that point onwards. So this is another domain where you can use spot instance and save a lot of money. In this example, this training job built a model using random cut forest algorithm. The total training time was around 52 seconds 
However, we are billed only for 20 seconds as we used spot instance. So we got a discount of 61%. To summarize, the spot purchase is a viable option to maintain your application capacity. Services like auto scaling and elastic load balancer make it super easy and convenient to use spot and lower your infrastructure costs. For training and data analysis jobs, frameworks like SageMaker and Hadoop can automatically handle instance interruptions. I hope you like this material. Please do click on subscribe, like and share the video. Thank you.